thank you for being here this evening uh, to listen to this uh, presentation. So the paper is titled Cross-Country Stock Market Co-Movement, the Macro Perspective, and is uh, in collaboration with Alexios Anagnostopoulos, who is in Stony Brook University, Erema Tesaraoulou, who is in Sapanji University in Turkey, and he's also a Newton Fellow uh, with the British Academy at Cambridge, and Elisa Faralia, who is a colleague at Cambridge as well, at the Faculty of Economics. So let me start with uh, opening how we started thinking about this project is that one of a fa favorite quote for economics and finance is that we say that there's no such thing as a free lunch. But it's, it has also been thought that diversification uh, is one such rare instance of a free lunch that if you spread, say, your assets geographically well enough, it's quite likely that your investments will not rise and fall together. And therefore, you would be able to get the same rewards, but with less risk. That's a very important uh, idea in finance. So we started thinking about this and thinking whether it's true or not, uh, because um, but, but we've seen happening, I will show you a plot here, uh, is that this is not necessarily the case at least not in recent times. So what I show you here in this graph is a plot of a four-year rolling window correlation of weekly stock market returns uh, of the MSCI index for the United States with the MSCI index for the rest of the world since the uh, mid 1980s. So just to understand what happens here is that low correlations mean that there's a possible, that it is possible to take advantage of this free lunch because stock returns across different locations are unrelated or less related. While if we have high correlations, uh, this means that stock returns across the world move together. Uh, therefore, what we can see here is that there's been a sharp rise in the correlations um, uh, in this period uh, between you know, mid nineties and around just before the financial crisis and the advantage of the geographical diversification is essentially gone. Uh, so in fact, if we, if we look at correlations of stock returns between developed countries, uh, different pairs of developed countries, also for US, as I showed you now in the rest of the world, we, we noticed that these correlations have approximately doubled between the 1980s and the 2010s. And, and in all cases, this sharp rise was observed in the decade between uh, mid 90s and, and mid 2000s. So stock markets generally uh, are, are more synchronized perhaps because the world is more synchronized now. Uh, so we want to identify here, what we want to do in this paper is to identify and quantify specific uh, drivers for this increase in stock market movement. So several factors have been proposed informally or formally in, in, in this particular literature as potential drivers. So I'll give you some examples. Uh, the general business cycle synchronization that we know is there. There's more synchronized monetary policy across developed economies. Uh, there's more international trade, uh, perhaps even cross-border equity holdings. What we do here, our focus for this research is on a specific driver, namely FDI, which is short for foreign direct investment. Uh, just as a reminder, before I go on, that FDI is an investment in the form of ownership of a business in one country by an entity based or incorporated in another country. For example, we can think of, say, Unilever, uh, establishing some production unit or a subsidiary in the United States. Okay. So let me explain a little bit the idea of what uh, mechanism we have in mind here and why we think we believe that FDI is important for the co-movement of stock returns. So we try to imagine the world as in a simple framework as two locations or two countries, if you want. So let's say take, for example, US and Europe is the second location. And let's say that each of them has one multinational firm incorporated in each country, in each location. So we can think of, say, as an example, take Pfizer in the US, and we can think of Unilever in Europe. Then we can also say something like what happens, where is trading taking place for the stocks of this firm? So the stocks of Pfizer are traded in New York Stock Exchange for US residents, for Americans, and they offer some returns, RP. 
and then the, the, the stocks of, of uh, Unilever are traded in the London Stock Exchange for Europeans with returns RU. So up at this point, any movement in stock returns of these two firms would come from general business cycle synchronization. If, for example, countries exposed to the countries are exposed to common global shocks uh, that are the same across the world. For one such example is the COVID shock. Um, but otherwise, there's not much else linking the two firms. All right. Now, if we want to bring in our idea here, is that what makes the two firms multinational is that they do FDI, they do foreign direct investment. And the way we uh, define and understand FDI is that they build, the firms build production units, factories in the foreign country. So, what we have in mind here is that Pfizer, for example, builds factories in Europe that produce their medicine, vaccines, etc. And Unilever also has factories in the United States. The fact that they both have factories in both countries means that they both get exposed now to more similar shocks because every time something happens um, in, in, in one of the two countries, say in the US and nothing else say happens in Europe, Unilever is still affected because the shock that takes place in the US affects what happens to the whole um, production, to the total production of Unilever. All right. So therefore, already with, with in incorporating the fact that these firms do FTI, their values, the firm's values and therefore their returns become more synchronized. Now, an additional important feature element is the fact that such firms also do something uh, unique to this type of uh, production is that they invest in intangible technology capital. All right. So this means that they're doing they're developing uh, technologies and, 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 and some form of production input that is common for all production units. What we have in mind with that, I'm thinking about, for example, Pfizer developing the vaccine for COVID. The same technology that is being used in the US for production in the US is also used in the uh, factories elsewhere in Europe. So the intangible technology capital is used across the locations and the, the development of that is important for both locations, all right? Same thing for Unilever, for example, here. Now, why is this important is because this means that there's an additional spillover effect in production from one location to the other, uh, further increasing the synchronization and co-movement of stock returns. In other words, what we want to argue with this mechanism here is that um, that FDI increases stock market correlations and co movement over and above what you would expect solely due to business cycle synchronization. Okay, so let me show you now. Let's see next what happens if we look at FDI in the same period as the stock market correlation. So in this graph, the left axis shows the levels of correlations as before. And the, rate, the, the, the right vertical axis shows you FDI positions as um, fractions of, of uh, as a percentage of global GDP. So in the short period between mid 90s and mid 2000s, uh, we see the FDI doubling uh, from around 5% to around 10% uh, of uh, relative to uh, global GDP. And this happens around the same time that we have this observed increase in stock market correlations. Okay, so we next, what we wanted to do was to formalize these insights because so far we just had the kind of an intuition about what, what happens here. And we tried to think about a little bit, look at numbers, but we wanted to go further and do some careful empirical analysis to uh, establish whether these insights are correct. Um, so we answered two questions with this analysis. First, we used aggregate country data to examine whether FDI is an important driver for cross-country stock market co-movement. And indeed, we find that, yes, that's true. We find that doubling country pair relative FDI positions is associated with an increase of 0.16 in stock market correlations. And maybe I should remind you here that correlations are small numbers. They vary between minus one and one. And in the graphs I've shown you, they're basically positive. So an increase of 0.16 is substantial. And this happens even if, if in, when we control for other important factors, for example, trade. 
The second uh, question we, uh, we look at is we use our data, uh, data from US multinational firms to ask whether investment in technology capital, as I explained earlier, by multinational firms is important for explaining stock market co-movement. And indeed, again, um, the answer is yes. Such firms have a return correlation with foreign stock markets that is on average uh, 0.11 higher than that of non-multinationals. All right, the next step uh, for our work was to uh, put a theoretical framework and quantify uh, this uh, potential uh, driver of uh, stock market movements. So to provide additional support for the insights, we built this theoretical framework, uh, which basically this is, is a, for a rigorous formal description of the example I showed you before with the two countries and the, the two multinational firms. Uh, and it captures the mechanism I explained. And indeed, we show that in this uh, framework, when firms do more FDI and invest more in technology capital, their returns become more correlated. We use this framework uh, to now quantify the importance of FDI for stock market co-movement. And the way we go about this is that first we calibrate the model to the US economy and the rest of the world in the early 1990s, targeting the correlation of returns at the same time period to 0.38. And then we use this uh, calibrated model to do various experiments around the same basic idea. We simulate the increase in FDI positions as we observed in the data. And then we see how the model predicts, uh, what the model predicts for stock market co-movement. So, Good news is that in our benchmark experiment, the model explains about one third of the increase in stock market co movement. Correlations increase uh, from about 0.38 to 0.52, uh, which is about one third of the way of what we see in the data, which was about 0.80. So this is uh, where our analysis stops. We've done several robustness checks and, and, and analysis around that. And I will close with a couple of comments about what we're planning to do uh, next. Having shown that FDI is important for a substantial part of the increase in stock market movement, it still remains for us an open question, what explains the remaining two thirds and why? We have a little bit of a sense of uh, where things could be going and, and, and for what reason, but overall this research that I talked about Today is part of a larger ongoing research agenda that focuses on understanding the properties of stock market movement across the world and over time. Um, and uh, that's how we, what we've done so far. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to take questions later. Thank you.